Namaste. Welcome. Welcome to this web satsang. A satsang is a Sanskrit word for sharing one's truth. So, we'll be bringing up different topics that could be of helpful in our evolution of consciousness to grow into a higher awareness to be able to live our life from our highest potential. How's that? <laughs> at least I will share about that. So you know you're in the right channel at the right time. <laughs> so, most of us are interested in living our life being as happy as possible. And we go about this in many different ways. And I would like to share how we can start living in that state of fulfillment and happiness. And it's really a wonderful thing as you get the hang of it. So if you're new to this channel, I welcome you. If you've been into meditation and development of consciousness for many years, I welcome you also. Wherever you're at right now, this is where you can take off to the next level. As many of us have been seekers for moving deeper into the state of now, like how can we be aware of what is happening right now? Because that is ultimately what will bring that joy that happiness, that which is called mindfulness today, it's a very modern term, a little strange word, but there it is. It is being able to leave the past alone and living in the now. So that sounds very nice. And everyone would probably agree that, oh, that would be wonderful. How do I go about this? So there's so many things I want to bring up. Let me take it step by step. So our heart and our brain many times are not synchronized. They're like living in two different kind of perception of what is actually going on. And with that I mean what we are thinking and the thought processes that are happening that we are aware of in, in, in the brain region is different than what we are actually feeling in our heart. And when, when we say, I am, we usually put our hand here and say, I am. You know, you identify with something here, right? So, to be able to let go of the past and the living in the now, we need to be clear of that this might not be in synchronicity inside of us. The heart-brain connection. If you become aware that it is so, perhaps on the outside, see, I, I, I work as a therapist and I, uh, with treatments to remove anxiety and stress from the body. And the physical treatment called craniosacral comes from the osteopathy. And I work very much with burnt out people, stressed out people. I've done this for 20 years. So I'm speaking from that point of view, so I understand. It is through experiencing of meeting many people who are not feeling good, who have come to the conclusion and realization that I need some help. And we get great results from just affecting the spinal fluid and and in this treatment. I won't go into that. But what I want to get to is, as people come in into the clinic, many times I work with people who are on sick leave because they're so stressed. Today it's very common. And they're often times you can't tell on their face. Right? They're very happy. 
and they say, I feel so sick, like that. And I'm all stressed out, like that. And I hope you can help me. Then I know it's a real problem. <laughs> it's much better if they come in looking like a pile of rag. <laughs> but see, we've been trained to have like a face outwards that is not in synchronicity with what is actually going on. So we are tricking our, our environment, our near and dear ones, our colleagues at work are not aware that what is going on in here. So at least for ourselves, we need to come to that realization that I think I need some help in the synchronicity coming into alignment with the harmony that is natural for us human beings to have, our very system, our body system, with all the different organs and, and systems in our body, is made to experience life through the senses, through experiencing it here and now. We are made like that. That is our highest potential. And science today is coming very close to giving us a breakthrough in this through the emergence of quantum physics and looking at reality that will change depending on the perception of it. So we are coming pretty close to shaking hands, science and you can call it spirituality, but be careful, at least in, in my view, spirituality, it is more living in the present or living in the now. If you want to call it spirituality, then you can do so. I just believe that it has more to do with alignment into a higher consciousness where we can receive help and that we need to come to that point in ourselves when we start seeing where we're actually at without any having to read a thousand books and go to all these courses. It's just a matter of coming into that realization and insight hits you. And during this hour, I hope that some insights will strike inside you. We'll go over this a little bit and we're also going to do some guided meditation with meditation processes, with sacred transmissions of energy through an ancient technology of consciousness of sacred sounds called mantras. These sacred sounds have been repeated for generations upon generations, for thousands of years, so they carry a great power and can be transmitted in these processes. So you will be experiencing both the guided meditations, some insights, and the sacred sounds. Now, most of us, we don't really have a problem with... Just going to see. <laughs> I hope I'm speaking loud enough. I hear it afterwards otherwise. You should have spoke hard, <laughs> louder. <laughs> okay. So most of us, we are more... We have no problem with being, you know, in all the happy personality states that we have. But when it comes to the suffering or when we're not feeling good, that's what we want to focus on here to get help with being aware of that without running away from it because we have become experts in that just like we put on a mask not showing for uh, the people around that how we might feel we are also become good at running away from our own suffering suffering is a big word it could be like uncomfortableness something that you're not comfortable with inside yourself so we're going to focus on those things to help to help be able to also hold that. 
that you'll be able to be aware that it's there when it's there. Because life will flow through us like that. Life will give us different experiences, like a river is flowing over all kinds of nature. So is our life flowing through all kinds of experiences that we have. And I was contemplating today as I was walking in the forest, it's like nature is so, so simple and it's so obvious teacher to us. It is there with all these different aspects of it and we feel so at peace and enjoy when we are in nature. We have created these square houses and we have these ideas that we probably thinking that we are some kind of square beings also. Or don't you look in the mirror and, and you think that you are a two-dimensional being somewhere in there, you, you, know, you know that you're not actually inside that piece of glass that is hanging on the wall, right? But still, as we stand there in front of the mirror, we go, yep, yep, this is what I look, you turn, you hold it, you go, yep, that's what I look, and then you walk around. <laughs> this is how we do it. So we have some kind of strange perception of ourselves. We are not square beings or, or like two-dimensional walking like this. We are fully alive. There is not a, a straight line in our body. Have you seen one? Not even the horizon is straight. Nature is all the time moving and flowing. And us human beings are made to flow with life, just like that. Just like our bodies are flowing and changing all the time. You are actually not the same now as you were a few years ago. All the cells in the body has changed. So how can we say that we are the same all the time? Constantly there's a flow of change. So in our consciousness to keep up with this, to come into this alignment of flow where we start feeling good no matter what is there. I mean, we don't walk into the forest and start yelling at some old leaves on, on the ground saying, you should not be there. You should only be these new things. Only the new green spring thing and the birds. I don't like the insects. You know, it's not like that. It's a wholeness. It's a completeness. So, we are, as we are discovering that we are also like that in our consciousness, and that we become friends with all of these things, including the past. See, if we, if we don't want to look at the past, like when you go into the forest, there is, because of the past, that the, the present here is now. So, when it comes to leaving the burdens of the past, we're soon going to do a process with it, I'm just sharing some insights that might be helpful as we go into the process. And as you go about your days and you learn the art of meditation, which means just being with what is there right now. We'll do some of that later. You will start falling in love with the moment. You will start enjoying whatever is there and whatever perception, because you are like the camera, right? You are, it's looking out, so something is looking out. That's something that is looking out, we are getting in contact with. It is something you easily can get in contact with if you have a little focus in here. Just a little focus in the heart region. Because this witness that is looking out, it is also a high, high intelligence. And everybody has it. So it's not like it belongs to some people. And then other people don't have it, no. See, this kind of connection between our heart and our brain, the brain is like a processing machine, right? It's just processing the thoughts and the uh, belief system and the feelings that we have, making it into your picture, your filter of this reality. It's this beautiful thing called the brain. But the brain itself doesn't have any self-nature, any consciousness. It's just a magnificent processing machine, like a computer. 
right, that is making all this happen. But we need an input, an output, and all these different things that goes into the consciousness of who we are. So that's why, in just recent discovery of science, was a, f a female scientist from South Africa. I don't remember her name now, but when I do, I will put it into the link here because we'll save this video. She discovered, as late as 2014, that there are neurons in our very heart that is communicating with uh, the neurons in our brain. So our heart and our brain is intimately connected. So we are actually thinking with our heart. This is science now. Now, in the ancient technology of consciousness, dating back for thousands of years, they already knew this. But it's nice when science and the ancient knowledge and technology is coming into uh, a unity. It's very exciting, especially in the place where I live in Scandinavia. We are very much interested in both science and the mystic, and we try to combine it as often as we can. Many people that live in this region have that kind of understanding of life. That's why it's, it's very exciting, actually, to live here. And I'm very happy to send this from these sacred lands, if I can say so. I believe that this place, going through Scandinavia and actually down through Germany, Italy and South Africa and Hawaii on the other side, the old ancient Mayan culture, the Mayan Indians, they had a, a calendar system that was built on consciousness. And they said that after the year 2012, their calendar changed completely. They said because humanity can then go into a new way of experiencing reality, what they call a unity consciousness. They saw their calendars as pyramids and that humanity and also actually before even human humanity was here, these ancient people were very highly evolved beings. They could measure it like the pyramids that nine levels and they could date that on the um, around 2011-2012 Humanity has the possibility to go into the unity consciousness. In other words, downloading the God consciousness, we can call it, or the higher consciousness. Because what happens when you're at the top of the pyramid? What can you go? If you go from plateau to plateau in a pyramid and you stand in the top, where do you go? Well, it's only heaven. Heaven is next. So this is how the ancients said and they actually even calculated that our Earth, our planet, is just like the human brain. On the right side of our brain is representing the eastern part of our planet. The left brain is representing the west part of our planet. So, just like the western hemisphere of our planet, they usually involved more of being in, in individual and being more like we call the male dominated analytical consciousness and what the left brain is engaged with with numbers and um, letters and analysis now the right brain which we call the feminine side of the brain or the female side is more the intuitive side that has to do with colors and the abstract with the dance and movement music right this is also representing of uh, the eastern part of our planet, which is also more group consciousness uh, oriented. So this ancient culture, the Mayans, they in their calendar system, they said after the year 2012, that consciousness will be born into the world and people will start seeking that and experiencing that. And actually, if you look at the planet, these people said, there is a midpoint, just like we have in our brain. There is a, a line between our right and the left brain, right? So there is on the planet. The planet also has a, what the Mayans call the world tree. So the world tree center that then branched out in the tree of life, right? to the right, to the left, to the east, to the west, right? Just like our brain, it's like our planet. 
and they calculated that it would go right through this region from the region actually right outside the, the city I live in is Helsingborg <laughs> usually joke about that city but now I'm very happy living here <laughs> so out between Helsingborg and Helsinger there is this grid line that goes through the earth right down through right uh, right through Berlin actually where the Berlin Wall they fell down 1989 it was a sign that a unity consciousness wants to be born right something is cracking up in the consciousness all the way down smack into the Vatican of Rome it's also crossing right there down to South Africa through Africa and if you cut the earth like that you will come to Hawaiian Islands and I was actually there for a few years ago and I shared this in a satsang I had at Hawaiian Islands and I met some of the abor aboriginals in Hawaii and as they heard this they shared yes we know about this too so in their culture in their ancient history of culture they knew this was maybe 2006 or something and we had all these ideas of what would that would be like 2012 but it was actually a birth of a new consciousness this consciousness has now gotten to be a few years old so we can now make more sense of the shift in the actual consciousness that has happened just like a baby is born it can't do much it needs to grow like a little plant that's coming out as a sprout now this is becoming more obvious that we are all connected most people have that kind of experience it's that if nothing else you are online right you're connected almost everybody has a phone and then they get online so we are connected people are starting to experience that now the interesting part of this consciousness we can call one consciousness or the oneness consciousness unity consciousness the law of one however you want to perceive it or understand it or study it or contemplate it is even the best thing because it's really not much to learn <laughs> with the brain necessarily even though it's very helpful to have the intellectual capacity to understand what's going on in these times when this is being born into our planet into our our reality whether we like it or not this is happening so it is a consciousness that is born and triggered in here our heart is awakening so if our heart is filled with burdens of the past or something that we have not solved from the past that reality is being sent up for the neurons in our heart to our brain our brain is then creating that kind of a reality that we are seeing the world from these glasses of our heart like pink or orange or green or gray or you know how I view the world will be different than you view the world even though we can agree that this is this and this is that we view it from our own reality depending on our own experiences and who we are and the different programs that we came into this life with so exciting is this we're going to go deeper into this in a web course I will have later this month I welcome you to that soon it will be up we'll go into very deep processes we are not touching upon the deeper levels now we're just touching upon getting into the flow of your life and getting into anchoring yourself getting yourself into the uh, like when you drive a boat what do you call it you're the captain right you're the captain of the boat you want to be like oh I want to ride this thing called life Right? You, you're ready to get this boat <laughs> into the ocean of love, I was going to say, because this life is filled with love. But we are perceiving it from so many different hurts from the past. So we want to do some processes on, on this uh, website sign to be able to access a flow of forgiveness. It's really what the great masters and teachers that have come to help us from whatever spiritual tradition that we all come from they all had good intentions to help humanity with this now as we are coming into this time now 
where all this will start making sense. This is an excellent time to do this kind of processes. So if you are a Christian, if you are a Buddhist, or you are a Muslim, or if, or if you are Hindu, or if you are like many people here, atheist, it, it really does not matter. The kind of spiritual or religious or non-religious beliefs that we have, it is personal. It is highly personal. One person cannot tell another how they should think or feel or believe because there is no such thing. See, this is the truth. Oh. <laughs> well, there you go, something. <laughs> so, this is... <laughs> Somebody want to make that point really clear. For me, it is like the, the highest lottery win when that dawns upon you because the I'm really sharing with you now the wings of freedom will really set in as you get this point that it is your personal business why because it's your heart isn't it it's your heart and your brain you're not linking in your heart with somebody else's brain that would be very strange no, and you're not linking in with somebody else's heart with your brain somehow. That, it's not possible. You are wired in this beautiful universe called your body. And you cannot miss the web course that we're going to have because it's going to be about all this, about our physical body, health, and how the consciousness is connected to it. We'll go like really deep into it. You, you don't want to miss that. Okay, we're not going to go there now. But what you're going to discover is that you are anchoring into your own truth and experience of this presence, this sacred platform from inside you, how you experience it. What is your truth about it? So this, it's high time to go into processes for this now. So let's do it. The first process guided meditation we're going to do will be to anchor into this for you. It's always the first thing you do. Now, if you are a spiritual person, like, like many of us are, we like to do meditations. And we like to do prayers. Prayers is nothing but communication with a higher presence in your heart. So the first thing you do if you do such a practice is you always call upon that presence. You put a focus and realization that this is here because most of us are living in the mind. The mind is something that is around all the time. We're picking it up like mobile phones. It's like in the, in some kind of network and we're picking it up. So you want to get online with your divine. So. You can close your eyes now and just closing your eyes is a, called a mudra. It's a sacred posture that actually helps you to see inside what is going on inside. So already you are doing something wonderful. You're closing your eyelids. Now you sit with your back straight and you have your feet touching the floor somehow. If you can not cross the legs, it's good. You might sit on a chair, you might sit cross um, on the floor, also fine. But just become aware of your leg, legs and feet. Just be aware of that. You're simply noticing, there is my feet and there is my legs. Now be aware of your hips and your pelvic region, your buttocks. And relax your legs, your feet, your buttocks. Relax your back and spine. Be aware of the trunk of your body, your stomach. Relax your chest and shoulders. Relax your neck and throat. Relax your whole head and your face. Relax. 
Just be aware of your body sitting and breathing. That's all that's going on right now. This what you're doing right now is called a Vipassana meditation. It's done for thousands of years and it's a very powerful meditation. You can do it any time during the day. For a few minutes or longer, you decide. When you do this, it's easier for you to see your inner world. The thoughts and the feelings, sensations, whatever is happening inside of you. Now, you put a focus inside your heart region. And the heart region is where we can most easily connect to that sacred platform inside. That presence of light within or a presence of peace. The presence of a higher intelligence. We can call it your sacred higher self. God within the divine. The one consciousness, the supreme light, supreme consciousness. You call it what you want. It is outside the mind's capacity. You can access it from your heart. So just put a focus in that region and just receive this energy transmission of the sacred sound through this mantra. Tvameva matacha pita tvameva Tvameva bandhuscha saka tvameva Tvameva vijadra vinam tvameva Tvameva sarvam mamadeva deva Tvameva matacha pita tvameva Tvameva bandhuscha saka tvameva Tvameva vijadra vinam tvameva Tvameva sarvam mama deva deva Tvameva matacha pita tvameva Tvameva bandhuscha saka tvameva Tvameva vijadra vinam tvameva Tvameva sarvam mama deva deva Tvameva sarvam mama deva deva Tvameva sarvam mama deva deva Stay with your eyes closed and in your own way give gratitude to that presence within you, the one that loves you, that cares for you, that watches over you, that takes care of everything for you. Start relating to that presence of peace inside, however you relate to it. It is the unity consciousness emerging like a world tree inside your heart, like the divine feminine, divine masculine, the god and the goddess, yin and yang, united as one inside your heart. Like the Mayan said with the world tree, it can be a sacred world tree in your heart. It could be a symbol of the yin and yang. It could be a symbol or form of a master that you have been following that has that God consciousness. Or any form that you feel is representing that sacred presence inside. Many people see it as a light within, a supreme light some people experience it as a supreme love, a love that is a state of consciousness, that is always there, 
capable of taking care of everything in your life, a loving beingness from your heart. You will explore and go deeper into this presence day by day if you seek it. If you simply close the eyelids and sit in a vipassana and just put a focus inside your heart the way you are doing now, and you can listen to a, any sacred mantra. All the sacred mantras are taking the listener into that state of unity, moving a person into the enlightenment process where you can put light on whatever is there, where you no longer need to push away anything. That which is called fear or that which is called the mind, it's actually the same thing. It is not wanting to see the wholeness of what is there. It is wanting to push away something and have something else there, like a duality consciousness or a sense of separation. This is the consciousness of the past. Up to the year 2012, that was how this world was functioning at its best. And we tried to do our very best to manage the suffering we had. Now, after 2012, this unity consciousness was born, but it still means that we have to reach, we have to download this consciousness. It's not just dawning upon us yet, but soon it will. But we are, we are like a little six-year-old child, so we still need to seek it. So you can seek it by doing this process that we're doing now. Simply a meditation of recognizing this is how your body is right now. But sometimes when you sit down in a vipassana, you will feel some kind of pain somewhere, or you have some bad mood, or anything is happening. It's fine. There's no prerequisite of what you have to be feeling before you sit down on a vipassana. Any time is a good time for a vipassana. So. Just sit down, make an agreement with yourself. You can shake hand with yourself and you go, I want to do this every day. If you really want to grow in your consciousness to explore this one consciousness in your heart, then go about to do it every day. Because the brain that we are going to go deeper into now, the brain is processing through habits. This is how the neuron networks is made. And that's why we are stuck in all these kind of different habits that are not so good for us. But it's a way to break these habits when we connect to the divine consciousness or the oneness consciousness in our heart. So the first thing you can do to help yourself in this process, it is to sit down in a vipassana meditation every day because your brain will soon catch up to, oh, it's getting a new habit. If you were to do this 21 days in a row, don't skip a day, do 21 days in a row because then the habit is formed in the brain, in the actual brain structure. So, you can also do the following process we're going to do now. Look into your life, keep your eyes closed and have this focus. You are, we have called upon our divine presence now, the divine mother, divine father, the god and the goddess, yin and yang, the world tree is all there. We have called upon it. Now, we ask our sacred presence, is there something in our lives that we are struggling with? Some kind of suffering, something that is like, oh, we want to push it away, or we want to run away from this, or we, we've been really trying to solve this problem, it's just not being solved, we need help. So, we'll ask for that to show up now. If there is a relationship, perhaps, or it's a situation, you can just hold that energy or the, if you can see it as a picture, you're just aware that, uh, yeah, this, this I need, this is the thing that I really want to have help with. Now, if you are a visual person or if you're a feeling person, you can imagine that you have a sacred fire inside your heart or like you have a violet a fire in your heart. It is a fire of transformation. Like the alchemy of the past, they used this 
fire of transformation. To transform one thing to another, even if you sit by fire and you throw something in, it transforms into smoke, isn't it? It transforms. So, sit by the sacred fire now. It's the fire of your divine. It's a part of how who your divine is. It has that kind of energy or transformation. So, you simply let go of that situation that you're struggling with into the fire. Give it into the divine, into that unity consciousness inside you. You're aware of it, and you're just willing to let it go, to let it be resolved or dissolved, either way, by this presence of the sacred one in the heart. And re receive this energy transmission of the sacred mantra. Shiva Nama Om Om Nama Shivaya Shiva Nama Om Om Nama Shivaya Alakalak boom, alakalak boom, alakashiva shambo. Alakalak boom, alakalak boom, alakashiva shambo. Kailash ki raja shiva bole, boom 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 bole nat. Kailash ki raja shiva bole, boom 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 bole nat. Shiva Nama Om, Om Nama Shivaya. Shiva Nama Om, Om Nama Shivaya. Alak alak boom, alak alak boom, alak Shiva Shambo. Alak alak boom, alak alak boom, alak Shiva Shambo. Kailash ki raja shiva bole, bom 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 bole nat. Kailash ki raja shiva bole, bom 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 bole nat. Bom 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 bole nat. Bom 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 bole nat. And keep your eyes closed. Give gratitude to the presence of the divine, to that sacred fire, the sacred platform inside. No matter how you experience that, whatever you are feeling inside, a process has started from inside as you are learning to let go, as you are learning to seeing the truth of what is there. You don't have to wear a mask. With your divine, as you sit down to do a vipassana, you are very comfortable to be yourself. You don't have to be anything else but yourself. Then you just speak to your divine. You say, this, this is situa situation at work or a relationship or this happened, this happened. You can speak like that. It's very easy then to not get lost in the, in the, um, in the mind's chatter if you speak like that. Or if you're a visual person, you can just see it and feel the whole situation that is bothering you. You go into the heart and you learn to give it. You just surrender into it, saying, you help me, please, thank you. And by giving gratitude, when you say thank you, that is a way to say, say I let it go now, thank you. As you get the hang of it, and if you do this process every day for 21 days, you will literally start doing it as a habit even without being in a vipassana it will be your brain will pick it up your brain and your heart will be synchronized your brain will go oh i i get it are you in this okay i'm holding it accessing the divine and letting it go see you are learning to hold it before you run away you hold it see it accessing divine letting it go it is something that happens quicker than a tenth of a second. But in the beginning, that's why you need to do this maybe, you know, like a tree 
right now this world tree is a little little tree it needs to be protected right like they put a little net around the the tree so they can grow and just so no one comes and eats it up and just it's gone this is like meditation you sit and you protect that world tree inside your heart to make it really big and strong so connecting into your heart and that sacred presence that carries the highest intelligence you can reach in the whole universe is right there in your heart don't you want to access it every day it is the most intelligent thing you can do so you can you can keep your eyes closed still and um, unless you're falling asleep right now then open your eyes and just look around and then close your eyes again don't fall asleep <laughs> some people do that um, we're also going to go since we do a vipassana we close your eyes and relax in the body go into your heart and now you know how what to do with the uncomfortable things your sufferings your challenges right you know that we go into creating the joy in your life creating what you want to manifest in your life what do you want to create in your life we are creating all the time as we becoming aware of what's going on you will not create all the fear based things in your life if you are aware of it and you're calling upon the presence in your heart see then you are seeing it you are the witness you are coming in oneness with it these kind of fear things they are like thieves like burglars in the night a burglar will only take when nobody's looking so please look because that burglar that fear if if there is something in fear in you it will not cause any problem for you if you are looking at it it's just going to wait for you to look away that's why you are practicing awareness you're practicing going into that witness to be able to see that that's all now we go into the next level and that is to create what you love to do the joy in your life creating the kind of world do you want to live in is it something in your heart that you want to have check in your heart now what do you want what do you want what do you wish for can you see it can you see it's happening see it as if that is happening right now what you're wishing for take one thing and you can have as many wishes as you want but just take one at a time so take one thing that you wish that oh if this could happen now see it as if it's now happening like a, a 3d like in colors it's actually happening now see it like that and receive this energy transmission from this sacred mantra Shri Mai Chen Mai Karuna Mai Amma Shri Mai Chen Mai Karuna Mai Amma Shri Amma Bhagavati Padmavati Shri Amma Bhagavati Padmavati Shri Mai Jin Mai Karuna Mai Amma Shri Mai Jin Mai Karuna Mai Amma Shri Amma Bhagavati Padmavati Shri Amma Bhagavati Padmavati Shri Mai Jin Mai Karuna Mai Amma Shri Mai Chen Mai Karuna Mai Amma Shri Amma Bhagavati Padmavati Shri Amma Bhagavati Padmavati Shri Amma Bhagavati Padmavati Om
Stay with your eyes closed. Give gratitude to that sacred presence inside your heart. The one inside manifesting your dreams into reality, that which you long for. And if you do a vipassana every day, you touch upon if you have any problems. It's first you call upon the presence, then you touch upon if you have any problems you need to speak to your divine with your sacred presence. You bring it up. You can also pray for someone. And sometimes you have a friend or somebody's asking for a prayer. You can pray for that. You can speak to your divine. And you say, uh, this person needs blessing. Please bless this person. Thank you. See, you're helping. Helping, you can help so much by doing this. Then you go into, is this something you, you wish to have manifested? Yes. Then you can also envision that person you're praying for healthy and well, of course. And you can also ask for material things. You can ask for happy, happy relationships. You can ask for anything. And you see it as if it's happening. Now, the last process we're going to do, go into is for our growth into our highest potential as a human being, to go very strongly forward into the enlightenment process. The enlightenment process is nothing but putting light on what is actually there, to come into an awareness of the truth of the, the actual experience that we have. And it will be different for every now, isn't it? So this process is to help us become aware of our present moment and to be aware that we have a sacred presence inside that is in charge of this very enlightenment process. So this evolution of consciousness that we have by going into what we call God realization, enlightenment, or higher state of consciousness, unity consciousness, it is two-folded. It is one, knowing what is the actual truth of the moment, not what you wish to have there, but what is actually there, to have an awareness and allowing that to be there in the inner world, accessing the higher consciousness. These two things, being with what is there and accessing that sacred one inside. That sacred one is outside the mind's capacity, so the mind cannot understand it. It can, it can have insights about it, like having an, some kind of understanding that it's like a world tree, like branched into a god and a goddess inside united as one or it's like a light or it's like a sacred sound it's a presence it's a unity it's a supreme love we can we can have those kind of words to describe it but the actual experience the very essence of it is a state of joy for no reason and this is this very consciousness that deep-seated love, joy, and peace, that is in the core of every experience that we have. No matter if it's some, something happy and bubbly, or if it's something deep suffering, there is an experience underneath it, the very rock bottom of that experience carries that. If we learn to let it go into the divine, it is like throwing your cup into the ocean and you are one with the ocean. It is that process. So this mantra that we're going to sing now, it ignites that process. Also, if you seek to have that kind of experience, then now you can pray for that. Pray to go into unity with your divine, or to go into a oneness, or move into the one consciousness in your personal way. It's not about telling the world. It is about you experiencing it. This very process, it's an inside job. That's why you going into your personal connection to your divine 
is of utmost importance if you are seeking this in this lifetime. And like the Maya said, it's highly possible. So please be interested in your experience in your heart and pray, ask that this connection between your heart and brain will be enhanced and you move into this process into your highest potential as a human being and receive this energy transmission through the sacred mantra. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Stay with your eyes closed Give gratitude Give gratitude to that presence of the sacred one inside you. Thank it for being there. And before you open the eyes, just have like an inner dialogue. You can you can like if you want if you could talk to God, if you could talk to to the divine, if you could talk to the sacred presence, this beingness inside you, what would you say? Would you would you ask something? If if you can't think of anything, you you can ask, please help me to to sit and be in a vipassana with you every day. I would love to enhance this relationship. Can, can you remind me so I won't forget and get lost in the mind's chit chat of what I have to do all the time? Let me have let me have at least seven minutes with you. You can you can say something like that. You you can talk talk freely now and, and receive this this last sacred transmission of the sacred mantra and just speak freely now. Om Satchitananda Parabrahma Purushottama Paramatma Amma Bhagavan Shri Amma Bhagavan Om Satchitananda Parabrahma Purushottama Paramatma Amma Bhagavan Shri Amma Bhagavan Om Satchitananda Om 
ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಪುರುಷೋತ್ತಮ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಅಮ್ಮ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಅಮ್ಮ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಓಂ ಸಚ್ಚಿತಾನಂದ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಪುರುಷೋತ್ತಮ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಅಮ್ಮ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಅಮ್ಮ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಅಮ್ಮ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಅಮ್ಮ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಓಂ ಗಿವ್ ಗ್ರಾಟಿಟ್ಯೂಡ್ ಟು ದಟ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಯು Thank you for being there like your supreme friend inside. Your personal, personal supreme friend that cares for you, takes care of you, your heart, your brain, your whole body. Miracles will start happening as we start doing this collectively, all of us discovering this wonderful thing, our essence within. So give gratitude in your own way and then you open the eyes in your own time so all the the sacred mantras some people ask me what is the meaning it's very common in the west people want to know what is this uh, the mantra different ma- mantras mean so the mantras that i sing are in the sanskrit language and the sanskrit is one of the, one of the oldest languages in in our world and the beautiful thing with the sanskrit language is that it is geared towards the unity consciousness the god consciousness divine the actual language structure is built like that you know like the english language or the european languages we have one or two words for god divine sacred higher self already were like <laughs> it's we have a few words but not too many right the sanskrit language is like a diamond with all these different facets and each facet is like an aspect of that divine consciousness so where we're kind of clumsy just saying we're well, god and god is one well and our mind goes okay what does that mean but see the sanskrit they had 3000 different words for what we call divine or divine consciousness 3000 different aspects or facets of that diamond it's brilliant right so if you're asking what is what is the actual mantras mean it means literally well god 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 divine 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 sacred divine god god <laughs> something like that right because our brain cannot we are our brains are not like made to perceive it the way that the sanskrit language is to understand it but our bodies are recognizes frequency the sound frequency it's going in so you, you can easily learn to sing it you can re-listen to this and you can sing along if you want to or any i've recorded many cd's i'm not a particular singer but i have a great passion for mantras i've had that for many years i i keep singing i don't care if you can sing or not you sing anyway right so any of the cd's uh you can sing along with it's always the text of it so you can sing along with it because we like to to learn it like that but the ancients they learned it by just listening they were listening to it and then uh, they just repeat it that's actually how i learned because nobody had any text when i learned it many years ago i just copied what i thought it sounded like and after some time i got it right so don't worry about it just listen really listen or you can listen to any of the sacred mantras you find elsewhere and you can bring it into your vipassana it's a very very nice way to do it and so there are facets like uh, of these mantras that i've been singing uh like the first mantra we sang the twameva it is like uh, 
talking about how your divine consciousness is like a divine mother and divine father, your best friends. It is so intimate, it's so close to you. It's something to that effect. Uh, and the second one was the Shiva. And the Shiva consciousness is one for transformation. It's like the alchemy, like the really alchemist, right? The Shiva is one of my favorite. I've been singing Om Namah Shivaya for 20 years before I got into this. <laughs> it's a, a passion of mine. So it always links in there. The Shiva is so helpful when it comes to the transformation process, which is a great passion. Uh, and and you, for you too, it should be passion. <laughs> if you want to be free of it, you need to be looking at it. Because you will see the joy in when you get the hang of this alchemy, in this transformation. So the, the second uh, mantra we did here today was uh, the Shiva, the transformation. Powerful. It's the power of the universe, the transformer. And it's also the, the peace, right? The deep city. You can sit in the middle of New York, New York City. All this car is happening, you'll be like, yeah, I'm with the Shiva, right? It's like that. I learned to meditate in the city of Los Angeles, never quite. So, the third mantra uh, was the, um, uh, what you want, your wishes. There we called upon the Divine Mother. Divine Mother is very quick. Uh, so that was the sacred mantra that we sang for manifesting our heart's reality, our heart's wishes. And then, as we move into the sacred enlightenment process, we sang the Purnima, which is wholeness and complete, no matter what is going on. Like the full moon is whole and complete and full. And even if you take something away from that fullness, which is all of us, we are a spark, we are a part of that wholeness, like Nara Narayana, we are a part of that. But even if you pull it out, that part is still full, just like the wholeness. So you, even if you pull something away, that is still full, and the little part is also full. So you are you're coming to experience that you little, little, you little thing, just like a little cell in the body. But it's also a part of this big thing. So, so we are. And you will start to enjoy that. You don't have to understand it. How can a little cell in the body understand the whole body? Not possible. But if it's just doing what it's there to do, what it's designed to do, maybe it's a little cell in the skin here is supposed to be doing this. And it's so happy if it's just doing that. And it's part of this whole thing, right? So we are. As we are learning to come into the joy and enjoy ourselves, we start doing what, what we're here to do. What is our purpose of life? To enjoy. And as you discover your joy in life, you are doing what you're here to do. So that was the Purnima. And then the last one was uh, the, the Mula Mantra. The Mula Mantra is describing this sacred one that is the sound. The sound is the Om. Every mantra has that, that sound of Om, which is the base vibration. If you could say, I want to listen to God right now, you would listen to Om. And then it has all this different qualities. Satchitananda is the three qualities of that one, which is a consciousness, a sense of existence, it's a high consciousness mm, intelligence, and its very nature is bliss. It's that joy, right? And the, it's Purushottama, uh, Paramatma, and Parabrahma, Parabrahma. So Parabrahma is all the form, all that is. So it's something, again, we cannot understand because even the mind, everything is also that. But it can also be in the form of Purushottama. So a miracle or a sacred place or um, a, a sacred being or Purushottama is a manifestation of that so that you can actually experience it. Because otherwise you can't, right? Because par Parabrahma is all that is. So Parabrahma is even the witness, everything. But Purushottama is a manifestation. And then Paramatma is that higher sacred self, what we call our Antriyaman, our higher sacred self, Paramatma. So it is inside of us as the Mula Mantra is Sri Bhagavati Sametha, and then Sri Bhagavate Namaha. And I made a short version here saying Amma, which is the a Sanskrit word for the Divine Mother, Ambhagwan, which is a Sanskrit word for um, 
divine father. So many masters are called that lovingly. It's like a loving uh, word to call somebody that has that consciousness, that has embodied that consciousness. So many masters of the of the past, you might hear them. They call them Amma. They call them Bhagwan. It's because they are manifested that consciousness. That's all. That's all it means. It could be nice to just know. Many Westerners are not aware of all the different Sanskrit. Um, but that passion will probably have to be for another web course, isn't it? It's time to it's time to end this web course. I am so happy that you joined in, and I hope to see you again. Thank you so much. Namaste.